Reaper 6.0 is out now. Let's take a look at what's new. So if you've been looking at the change log, you may notice that there's not a lot of big changes. There's not things like spectral editing or stretch marker rates or the web remote in this update. There's a lot more kind of behind the scenes performance improvements, little mouse modifier changes, things like that. But it's all good stuff. And this is a long overdue update. The new theme and the new high DPI support really helps Reaper look a lot more modern. Every feature request that I've come in through the past year hasn't been addressed. We're not seeing new plugins, new instruments, new graphics for the plugins, but you never know. Those things could come in the future. Um, looking at the change log from the past year even, there's so many great things that have been added um, for free. So we can expect bug fix updates, new features, all these sorts of things like they've been doing in the past on pretty much a monthly basis. And if you haven't been keeping track of what's been changing uh, like since the version 5.0 update till now, um, I have a playlist of all the videos I've done on those topics so you can catch up. There's so much in there. Uh, it's kind of insane. All right, so let's just jump into it. By the way, if you missed the Reaper 6.0 FAQ video that I put out a couple days ago, uh, you're going to want to watch that because I'm not going to uh, really cover too much of the same things in this. One thing that I didn't cover in that that I have seen come up in the past day or so is something affecting one of the defaults. The changelog says, Defaults enable track record monitoring on new tracks by default. So that means when you record Arma track, it's going to be monitoring or coming out of your headphones and speakers by default. And if you're not prepared for that or your studio is not set up for that, with a microphone that could create some instant feedback. Now it does make sense that they would add that as a default because a lot of other DAWs don't have separate monitoring buttons like Reaper does. Reaper has a lot more flexibility by having a separate monitor button, a lot of new users don't expect that second button. And just so we're clear about what this is, this is the record monitoring button, and the button beside that is your monitoring button. And when that's on, your voice is coming through the speakers. So if you don't like this default change, you can just go into the preferences, and under project and track send defaults, just change the record config, and uncheck monitor input. So this doesn't change anything in your existing projects, but this does affect new tracks that you add to your project. So Reaper 6.0 has a new theme adjuster script. This provides quick access to various things that would normally have to be done in a code editor, dismantling the script and possibly breaking it. Um, but there's a lot of cool things that you can do with this that hasn't been done before. You can easily adjust the name size on the theme. You can set it to auto if you go all the way to the left. I like about 110 or 140 on this. You can change the size of the volume control. If it gets too big, it pops down to the next row. Or on the smallest, it's just a knob. The input size is this panel here. Meter size, meter location, left or right, which I think is pretty cool. And then things like if the track is not armed, you can hide the monitor enable button, or you can hide the record mode in the input selector. So these tracks look a lot more um, kind of streamlined, and these other options pop up when they're relevant. You could also choose to always hide certain things that you never use. So you could hide the labels and values. You can hide the routing button or the pan button when the mixer is visible. So when I show the mixer, my TCP area gets very sparse, let's say. When I close it, all those controls are always available. So the thought here is that if you have the mixer open, you're going to be using that to control your tracks, and the TCP area is really just to show the lanes. And, and while you have the mixer closed, then you need all the functions. So there's a lot you can do with, with that, as well as in the mixer, there's a lot of things you can do here, changing the track width, like you can extend it with a sidebar, which puts your inserts and sends on the side of the track instead of above. You can make it narrower. Meter expansion is for when you have more than two channels on the track. So with the side chain setup, you've got four channels. Um, with a multi-out instrument, you may have 16 channels. And this just enables whether it's going to show just stereo 
or separate meters for each channel. And similar to the track control panel and the mixer control panel, you also have a page for envelopes. So you can do things like changing the, the size of the name area, if you want it larger or smaller. You can change the size of the knob, what sort of a controller you want on this. So besides the theme, there are also changes to high DPI awareness, and this affects Windows and Mac a little bit differently. If you are having a problem where your Windows settings don't work with Reaper, certain plugins are looking tiny on your screen, you're going to have to go into the Preferences General page and go to Advanced UI System Tweaks. And in here, you're probably going to have to uncheck some of these options, like um, on the Mac, it would be Allow Retina Drawing of User Interfaces. On Windows, it has a, sort of a different name there, High DPI Awareness. With the default theme, you can see that this is just a little bit sort of blurrier. This is kind of like what version 5 looks like. Just the text is a little bit not so clear on a um, Retina screen compared to with it on, uh, which makes it a lot crisper. Keep that on if you have a 4K screen, but if, if you're running into any issues with tiny plugin inter interfaces, I've seen some Waves plugins looking like uh, postage stamps uh, posted to the forum. And uh, yeah, so those are the, that's how you fix it. Oh yeah, and also in this window here, there's scale UI elements. And this is, this isn't a new thing, but uh, the settings do apply immediately rather than having to restart. So uh, let's set this to 1.5. So everything's just a little bit bigger and that gets applied immediately. Or we can set this to 0 0.8 and everything's just a little bit smaller. So rather than having to restart Reaper, that's an immediate change. So let's talk about menus. Some of the default menus in the top panel have been reorganized. Um, you can see that there are more um, organized by category, especially like the uh, the view menu. There's a lot more dividers in here now, so uh, maybe a lot simpler to find things. In the MIDI editor, the default toolbar has changed. So we have different view options for um, named notes, event list, notation, viewing as rectangles, triangles, or diamonds. Um, there's the MIDI filter, the track list view. Quantize button, the CC selection follows note selection, showing the grid, uh, snap to grid, step input, and then docking the editor on or off. So they've modified that a little bit. I don't think it goes quite far enough. So I'll probably stick with my customized MIDI toolbar, which has a lot of the same functions, but things like the grid settings, um, note preview on and off. I think that's an incredibly important one that should not be hidden in the menus. But yeah, I have to say the the new default MIDI toolbar is better than it was. Okay, a couple more things to do with appearance. In the main window, support positioning track control panels on the right side of a range. So if you search the action list and find show TCP on right side of a range, for people coming from Ableton Live, this makes perfect sense for them. So now you can do that. It's been frequently requested. And if you prefer to have your track controls on the right, now you can do that. So you'll find that action in the action list or by right clicking in the empty TCP area right here. Um, there's now the option of remembering window positions. Um, this is again in that preference I showed you, the advanced UI system tweaks. Right here, modal window positioning. Now a modal window is one that doesn't require you to close the window or doesn't require some sort of input from you uh, to continue using the program. So an example of that is the metronome window, or um, well, there's, there's a lot of different ones in here, uh, but you can have different options. So center on current screen, last window position, center on mouse cursor, or OS positioning. Uh, so that just lets the computer decide. I've been setting this to center on current screen. And so if I open up the uh, metronome window that pops up there, um, if I have this on center on mouse cursor, it's going to pop up right there where my mouse is. And if I set this on 
OS positioning that actually pops up on my second monitor. So yeah, I like to have center on current screen, but you might want to have last window position enabled. So if I put that there, close it, open that up again, it goes there. So that works with the metronome window and a lot of the other ones. Um, the preferences window is like that as well. That's a, This is a modal window. A modeless window would be like this one here, where you can't do anything um, without closing this window. There are two new preferences that deal with the effects list or the effects chain window. The first one puts the effects list on the right side of the window, and the second preference puts the add and remove buttons up at the top. This was added so that these add and remove buttons don't change position when you change the view to a plugin that is a different size. So I'm going to open up the preferences and go to plugins. And I'm going to click on this show effects list on right side of effects chain windows. Hit apply. And that puts the effects chain list on the right side. But as before, the, um, the anchor point for a floating window is going to be the top left. So if you change to a plugin that is narrower, it does put that um, further to the left. Now let's look at the second option, show effects chain buttons above effects list. That puts that at the top. And this option can be used without having it on the right side. And so when you switch to different plugins, those buttons stay in the same position. And you may prefer to have your effects list look like that. Tracks can now have positive or negative time offsets added to a track without affecting plugin delay compensation. You do this through the routing window. You just enable playback time offset, and you enter a value in milliseconds or samples. A really common use for this is to compensate for a long attack time on a string patch or a pad or some sort of sound that has a long attack time. If you don't compensate for that long attack time, often the chords can sound delayed or like they they are not changing in time with the rest of the band. And so you can use this setting to just make it play back a little bit earlier and then everything kind of sounds like it's in time. Um, alternately, you could delay a track so that it plays later, but it catches up kind of with that attack time. Um, so you can just turn this knob here, or you can enter in a value, um, and you can toggle between milliseconds and samples. There is an action to bypass this uh, playback time offset, but there isn't actually a way of knowing which tracks have this without looking at the routing window. So hopefully they'll add that as some sort of track element in the future. And related to this function, there is a new preference, max MIDI playback speed when applying negative track playback offset. So if you set this to 2x, then it will play those MIDI notes two times faster at the most to catch up with that negative time offset. This function could also be really useful if you are uh, sending audio out to external devices or bringing sounds in from external devices and they need a little bit of adjustment to sync up with your project. The dynamic split tool has been updated with a new algorithm, so it's going to detect things much better now. As well, there are presets so you can save your favorite settings and recall them at a later date very easily. Reaper now allows you to embed some plugin UIs into the track and mixer control panels. This includes support for re-EQ, re-X comp, re-comp, re-surround, and any of the graphical JS effects. So I'm going to show you some examples here. So I have re-comp here, and I'm going to right-click on it in the effects chain list, and I'll choose show embedded UI in TCP. And so that puts a little control for re-comp's threshold right here. And if the plugin isn't open, we have quick access to opening it right there. With this, you can alt click the control to adjust the ratio. And uh, the gain reduction meter will be shown here on the track. This also applies to the mixer control panel. So enable that. The same goes for re-EQ. We can embed that into the MCP. And so we have control over the EQ without having the window open. And most of the shortcuts still work here, so 
can double click down at the bottom and it will make a notch filter. We can set this up with resurround. So if you are uh, if you're doing surround mixing, this can be really cool to actually have uh, a surround panner on the track. Let's set this theme back to normal without the extended sidebar. So if you make this a six channel track, you can pan these positions around in here without having the full resurround plugin window open, and you get a lot more flexibility that way. So that is embedding plugin UIs into the track control panel and the mixer control panel. We now have another way to view an overview of all of the routing in the project. Go to the view menu and you can find track wiring. And we, here we have a wiring diagram. And so we have the master track and then any uh, folder tracks as well as the child tracks and sends are all visible here. From here, we can make new sends. So um, if we want a pre-fader send, we just drag from above the fader. And if we want a post-fader send, we can grab from below. So if I wanted to send this 808 kick to, I don't know, to this track, I can make a pre-fader send there. And I'll click to delete. Or if I want a post-fader send, I can drag it like that. Uh, we can click on this to view all of the settings about this particular send. Uh, we can drag these around. And if we right click, there's a few other options here like show only send wires on track mouse over. So here, when my mouse is over it, we can see the sends. If I right click, I can show only hardware outputs or show the routing controls when creating the send or hardware out. So let's say I make a send to this track here, it's going to pop up that window with all the settings for that send after I make the send. But really this is just a, an overview, another way of looking at your project and all of the routing, the, the plugin inputs and things like that. This isn't like a modular synth matrix or anything like that. It's just another tool that you can use to help track down um, problems with routing and things like that. In the MIDI editor we can now have MIDI CC events drawn like envelopes rather than just bars. So similar to the range view automation, we can draw in uh, CC events. We can right click to delete points or alt click to delete multiple. And we can uh, grab any of the points in between and change the shape. So I've got a Bezier curve there now, but we can grab a single point, right click in kind of the area around it, and we have different curve shapes like square, slow start end, etc. So we have a lot more control over MIDI CCs now. There is a page in Mouse Modifiers for left click, drag, and double click to adjust some of the settings dealing with editing these CC events. They did change in the defaults to be more like the default envelope behaviors for tracks. Something else you may have noticed in the MIDI editor is that the velocity handles have changed. These bars at the bottom, they now have a little circle on the top. They're not quite as wide. But there is another view option you might like. I'm going to go to the Options menu and go to CC Velocity Lane. And I'll enable Show Note Length in Velocity Lane. And that puts a little handle that follows the note length, which makes it a lot easier to grab these and edit. So you don't have to find that little single point. But as always, you can manipulate velocity in so many other ways, like with the mouse modifiers, mouse wheels, custom actions, and all those sorts of things. In the MIDI editor, the event properties window has actually combined the note properties and event properties. Instead of being in separate windows, it's now in one single window. I've got this open here. And so if I have this selected, it shows that. And if I select notes, the view changes we can show both of them at the same time, things like that. So instead of having this as two different windows and one of them being a modal window where you had to close the window before you could do anything else, this is now a modeless window and you can keep it open as you work. In the notation editor, this now supports the customized staff and note context menus. So if we right click here and go to customize menus and toolbars, we can go to the MIDI notation staff context 
and the note context, and you can put your favorite actions in here. Let's look at some of the changes with media import and media items. Properly adjust length of imported media with embedded tempo when crossing project tempo changes. So if you import something over a tempo change from that point on, it's going to stretch uh, in a different way to keep it in time with the project. There's a new time base for media items called Beats Auto Stretch at Tempo Changes. This is a time base setting only for items, so it's not in project settings or in the track menu. It's only in item properties here. So Beats Auto Stretch at Tempo Changes. So I have a loop that was originally at 86 beats per minute. It's imported uh, into a project that starts at 85 beats per minute. I've looped the item to go across a tempo change up to 90 beats per minute, and you'll hear that this automatically changes. We can now export loops, including stretch marker or transient guide information, uh, which can then be imported and treated like a sliced loop. So this is pretty cool. So I've got stretch markers on this item, and I'm going to export the selected item. So render selected media items, going to put it onto the desktop, and I'm going to check this box to embed stretch markers and transient guides. I'm going to render that. Now before we import that, we need to look in the preferences and just check what the media with embedded slice information is set to. So import files as a single loopable media item that adjusts to project tempo. That's one option. There's beat slices that dynamically adjust to tempo changes. There's a single loopable media item with transient markers. We can ignore the slice and tempo information and always ask. So let's change the default to, I'm gonna change the default to always prompt here. Um, there's the options of preserving the slice tails, chop all with the final tail slice. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna keep it on preserve all. And for embedded tempo information, there's a few other options here. I think I'll just put on um, adjust to project tempo. That's usually what I want. There's also this option when the file name suggests tempo, so I guess it needs to have like, you know, 80 BPM in the title, and then Reaper will notice that. So let's go to the desktop, grab that item that I exported, and drop it in. Reaper's going to ask me what I want to do with this. Let's do beat slices that dynamically adjust to tempo changes and hit OK. Now if I change the project BPM to, let's say, a little bit slower, like 73, it will put in gaps there. Or if we make it faster, it will overlap the items. So that's about it. So that's where we're going to end it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter, support the Reaper blog through Patreon, and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.